Hey, how's it going? I think I'm going to work on the crane today. I was goofing around with it before. I'm pretty sure when you attach a rope to one winch and then into the other winch, that gets you 150 meters from both winches. Even though this winch isn't receiving any signals to let out the rope, it's still allowing that rope to be used. So I got rid of one of the winches on that little adapter thing and went just straight to Maggles. So this is a 300 meter length of rope basically. And then I put some hard points on here. I'm not sure what I want to do with that, but I got a comment that said, it'd be nice if you were able to rotate containers if you're lifting them up. So maybe something that can connect to the crane. It's not quite what I want with this crane. So I'm putting it there with these two hard points so that in the future, if I get a good idea for how it would work or if anyone else wanted to make their own thing to connect to it, we can just send and receive data through these. And I've got one of these MCS. I don't know if this is MCS or if it's Aster. It says Aster right here. One of these pallets. It's got a flip switch for the grippers and to break them as well. And that works really well, just running up and down these tracks. And then I put a little winch in here at the back. I guess I can put my track back to there actually. So that winch will allow me to pull anything right into here. You can just push these pallets along the tracks pretty easily. And then I've got some ropes and cables to assist with that. And then the controls are over here by the door controls. So I've got winch up, winch down, winch length, and the signal for whatever reason, if we want to have something that's got a signal on it. You know, let's get these windows stretched across and maybe some kind of HUD or something. So definitely those windows. And then these ones probably, you can probably just use the 3 by 3s Let's get them edited. Um, hmm. Oh. There we go. <laughs> now I can't paint them though. That's not too bad actually. I might make this top window. You can really only stretch them by an odd number, right? So if I bring it to there, then I have to put a wall through that section. Or I have to stretch it even further, but then the other side kind of suffers because it won't be symmetrical. And then we'll need some invisible blocks so that you can't fall through. So I might be able to put HUDs or something in here, so it might be a good idea to leave some of these spots open. We don't actually need this many blocks either. It might help with the physics shape. And this one's got to go. And this button's got to go. There we go. So what information do you actually need to know if you're in a crane? Why did I delete those? Yeah, what kind of information do you actually need to know from when you're sitting in the crane? You probably need to know like you need to know, I would say, if your signal is on to the winch and what the length is. But you don't really need to know anything else because you're visually going to be checking all that stuff, right? You might, I guess you might want to know your current rotation. If you, your current rotation and then your up and downs on both segments, your winch length, and then you'll need some instruments to turn off things like lights probably be probably be lights on here all the other controls are done from the arrows let's get into it and actually see what it's like so like where would you want the information to be displayed i would probably want it on one of these corner pieces so you need to be able to sit in it and then push a button maybe you want some of that stuff down here I would want it in this window, I think. I don't think this window is going to be much use. But that's connected to part of the wall, so I don't know how I'll get anything into there. I can definitely put it like above it. Let's see, what about, so there's invisible blocks through here, right? If you're sitting there, that's kind of directly in front of you. You wouldn't want to cut that out. Kind of thinking if they were stacked like this. 
and I can't find any of my buttons today. They were stacked like that, but then rotated towards you. I don't think you'd need more than two of them, and if you needed three of them, it's like just for an additional small thing. Is that too much of your view taken up though? If it was the next one along, I'd be okay. Which is inside the window. So how can I get rid of the window? This is also kind of not a useful window, so I could put a pivot. I can't remember which way you do these to get an invisible pivot. So I keep the smaller side. Okay, that goes there. Then I can get rid of those. And then I want to hide where the instruments are. I put them like that, then do another piece in there. Does that cut out too much of my like vision down the side? Not really. There's, you wouldn't be really looking at too much down there. A little bit of that. Get rid of two and four. Grab a window. Put that in sideways. Get rid of that one. Wait, what was I thinking? <laughs> what was I thinking? Okay, here's my genius plan. Which uh, might not work. These instruments are going to rotate up. So they should actually be down, I think. Like that. So they'll all rotate up. Then we're going to stretch this window. And then I'll have two instruments just there. And then a whole bunch that rotate up into the window. Or into the space that I cut out where there was a window. Hmm. Oh, it's kind of what I wanted. I don't think it's close enough to what I wanted though. Maybe if they rotated the other way, I wonder how much they can clip into a window. Yeah, that's not a happy chappy. So the only things I really need to activate with buttons is going to be like unlocking the crane and then the rest of it is information that's being read. What if it's a little panel-y thing and it like pivots around <laughs> none of this is gonna work I just need to sacrifice some space somewhere what about this window not that window this window get rid of those invisible blocks I need to get rid of these invisible blocks and then do I want to pivot? We need like triangle instrument panels. Or like an instrument panel that you can just apply to any face. That's not right either. God damn. What if I move the seat back? Do I then get... Do I still have the visibility? Probably. That doesn't really achieve anything. I just need something that's going to allow me to use this. Okay, well, oh right, then, yes, okay. <laughs> I'm going to use this top one first, and so we need to know probably the winch length is important, the most important. We can use a gauge for this, I think. We can just go zero, zero to 300, and then beside it, um, I kind of like the idea of bar segments, or like letting you know how high up and down across the the range you are two bar segments so like one of them's the first one and one of them's the second one maybe that would be a lot of goofing around <laughs> let's leave them all as dials and we'll go crane rotation which can be between zero and one i think actually maybe it should be like between zero and 360 or 359 or something and then i'll just divide i'll round the number and divide it by 300 that way you should see your position based on like that the dial should point your position and then we can go first segment position and second 
pigment position and those will be between whatever their ranges are I don't know right now and then this one will be the unlock lock button so I think the first one will be like arm crane or unlock crane be a flip switch and I'm gonna make that one two three four five six these ones can be chained together because there's not too much going on here and that last one will be I think I'll make it an indicator and it will be winch signal okay, let's connect this I know that if I connect it with a rope I won't be able to send any of that data through to the maggles so I will have to make something it'll have to be some kind of cable microcontroller or I send it across radio there's so many radio signals going on here though it's kind of nuts all right see the winch is let out a little bit we can pull that up rotation um it's in degrees right so if i go all the way around it should go up to 359 and then reset back to zero wait what oh it's not clamped i thought it was rounding it should have gone back to the start there anyway we can go up oh uh, we can go in and out Yep, and then space is what triggers that light to come on. Uh, I think that's a pretty good compromise. Actually, it might be better if it's over here, because then it's not directly below where the crane is going down. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Because you are not, you don't need to look out over that side for anything. The annoying part is that there are invisible blocks that I am now replacing. Also, now that those are over there, they're not like directly in your line of sight. So is that more not useful? Do I have to like divide this by something? I don't know. Okay. Mm, yeah, see this is not, not so good. I don't know what to do about this. I could put it on a HUD maybe, but then I think it's still in the way. It's the kind of information that would be better here on my right side where I'm not looking. It's absolutely the kind of information you want on a HUD. So I think I can get rid of this top one. And then if I get rid of this window, pull this over here somewhere. Like even there would be okay for those two instruments like that. Because you're going to flick it on, never look at it, and then the the blah, blah, blah. the indicator is just going to be something that catches your eye to let you know that that is working let's say i get a window like a a one by three i stretch it two down and two up and then fill in this top bit with a wedge of some kind oh man going very heavy on the xml and then on the other side i also need to fill in these blocks the same way and then I need stretch blocks in there which I have here might as well paint all these grey might as well all the window frames will need to go grey anyway paint those yellow and I'm going to need invisible blocks for this as well, so you don't chuck yourself out the window. Oh no, it's wrong. Why is it wrong? No, it's right. No, wait, why is it wrong? It's wrong. It's... Why is it wrong? I should just lift it up. And then on this side, I can put a little wedge in. And then if I go to a one by one window, for this bottom part that should do it and then I will need invisible blocks maybe not there you just need enough not to chuck yourself out 
There is 110 invisible blocks on Clifford at the moment. Okay, HUD, 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 HUD. Uh, I think it has to go this way. There is some invisible blocks. That's a bit suspicious. Why does a HUD have that little thing anyway? What's this? Why don't I just get rid of this? What about a display? If I can get all that information onto there, it's like one, two, <laughs> there's like four lines of information. Will it work? Oh, it did work. Sort of. Uh, I mean, it is working. The values are just not rounded. I really wasn't expecting it to work. Still kind of useless that it's down there though. On a HUD would be better. I need a way to get rid of the little thing on the HUD. Anyway, I'm sick of this. Let's do something else. What I want to do is fix this pump here. So instead of just being a pump to pump into Clifford's fuel tank, I want it to be a pump that can be used to pump fuel from like one tank to another tank regardless. Nothing to do with Clifford's tank. So it'll have a lot of valves and stuff on it. So let's rebuild this. Okay, so like this thing here would let me pump between those two fluid ports and then I need a valve that will let me redirect into Clifford's fluid tank. I'll need a way to understand which way is in and which way is out. Because like if you had a in and an out but you were pumping, like if you were using this system with two arrow buttons, it's not helpful because in and out don't matter. If it were like a flip switch, if it were like this where we know the fuel level and then we have a button that just turns the pump on and then a reverse flow switch, then we can very clearly define which one is in and which one is out. And then you know when you reverse the flow, you're just flipping those two signals. Whereas like with this, with the arrows, you could start pumping out without turning the pumps on, you know, like you could be pumping in reverse by default. There's got to be a good way to do this because I think both systems are kind of flawed. Maybe it should be like um, each side has a thing on it. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. So I only need one side, but then what I should do is turn the instrument panel sideways and then whichever way the flip switch is going determines like A to B. Then I can flip my gauge up the other way. So the gauge is the fuel level. The flip switch is pump direction. And then I have another button which is just like turn the pumps on. So it's essentially the thing that I had before, but it's like maybe making it a bit more clear because the flip switch is the thing that visually shows which way it's going. Now I need a valve that will let me send it into Clifford or not. Which maybe that should just be another instrument panel. Like that. So you push the button. Wait, wouldn't you push the button to turn the pump on and then flick the switch to determine the direction? And then how do I know when I'm pumping it into Clifford or just using this as a ex like external pump. Do I need another button? I need a flip switch? By pass Clifford. But now that is... I'm going to need an instruction manual for this. And now I can use on off valves all behind the scenes. So I don't need to worry about anything that's really going on here. Except I need, oh yeah, I need a valve somewhere in here. I would need like a valve here, right? And this would stop it from going out. 
So it would like connect the main hose to Clifford, which we could put here. And so we would turn this valve on and close that one. And then we'd be going from Clifford's tank into this port. And then if I wanted to not do that, I would close that valve, open this one, and then it's going from the left port to the right port. Yeah, that makes sense. So basically this um, thing on the left is always open. The anchor on the left is always open. And then the anchor on the right is the one that gets closed off and on. How do I indicate that to you? That this is the one you need to connect to. And this is the bypass. All right, I'm gonna delete all of this. And then this is gonna take up a bit more space. So I might have to move this pipe, move where that rail goes to. having a stroke what is going on this is the valve that will control flow into Clifford's tank then there needs to be another valve which bypasses so I think that's just gonna go in the back here And then that goes up. Go this. Go straight back up and across. So we're connected from here. Out this bottom side into Clifford's tank. And then this valve into the bypass. Okay, that makes sense. I want to move this valve though so that I can hide that gap <laughs> all right okay and then this pipe that actually runs across the deck that is not needed anymore, I don't think. Because I can run through the floor now. All right, what have I done today? This is pretty much done, I reckon. That's easy to get to. I think I want to take this display and put a HUD somewhere up here. It might look a bit goofy if it's like clipping out through something though. Like it'll clip through the window. But yeah, I think a HUD is just going to be the best option for displaying that information. Because this is too much. It's like too out of the way. The, the flip switch is okay. And that should also reset. I don't know why it's not resetting. This is okay. I should be able to weld all that stuff. Turn it on. And then I'll put an electrical anchor on here. So if Clifford runs out of batteries, you can turn this on, connect a cable from here, run across, connect it to that, and that's connected to Clifford's main battery. So you can just charge it across, across the deck. I think we'll get rid of these ropes here and pull these rails out to meet the edge of the crane. And then it'd be really good if I could get it on an angle. Maybe I'll try some XML pipes to match up with this wedge this inverse pyramid and then it'll give, give you a bit more space oh also let me show you something let me show you something someone had this idea that if you're using the winch it was suggested that if the winch is winching then the spool on the back should be spooling Now the spool checks, or the, yeah, there's a controller in there that checks how long the winch is. And if it's between like one and I think it's 300 at the moment, then the spool will roll, rotate in the right direction. So if you're winching up, it rolls back. And if you're winching down, it rolls forwards. 
what I might try and do is hide a rope connector inside of it that's always in tension up to the end of the crane so it stops when you get to the top and then when you go down it starts moving again I thought that was a cool idea yeah another episode where I feel like I've done nothing at least the crane looks quite nice now we've got an APU that will probably work so yeah thanks for watching I'll see you next time